Hi friends at Real Life Funtopia. Well, here I am again practicing my skills at using the camera. And what's happening today at Real Life Fruitopia? Well, George got a great idea. There he is. And what will we be doing today? Switching papaya with lemon nitrate. Okay, he told me, he said I'd like to do something. This papaya starting to get shoots, the one that we had from the winter, but he doesn't think that it'll fruit it enough to produce fruit, so he came up with an idea, which I thought was brilliant. Brilliant, yes to take the lemonade tree, which is how old? Five years? No, it's uh, nine. A nine-year-old lemonade tree, which has beautiful fruit. It's a sweet lemon if you've never tasted one. And he is going to put the papaya in a pot, in a nice warm spot. The same pot. The same spot that the lemonade tree is in. And he's going to replace it with the lemonade tree. And I'm excited about that. So that is what's happening today at Real Life Fruitopia. This is great. Um, he just pointed out something to me that I missed because I'm not real analytical, but this here persimmon the is loaded. The 20th century variety. 20th century variety, which is... Also known as the Shuruga. 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 So it was starting to partially collapse and he put a nice stake here so it's great that you have a good farmer that is analytical that's looking at things thank you George okay he's in the middle of his digging process here and looking pretty good Smile, you're on can -do camera, George. It looks like a reward after we finish the digging. I'm actually the cheerleader sitting here doing my nails. And we are going to have our first black sapotes. Yay! Let's see if there's another ripe one here. Oh, yeah. Black sapotes. Coming soon. Guess what I had for lunch with my bowls and bowls of green, green gauge plums. I had a Hawaiian Supreme white sapote and it was heavenly. These are the next three coming. Guess what? I also had a few of these beauties for lunch too. The passion fruits. Yum. Three Nam Roy pomelos left. So I might pick one that's ready. It looks like this one's ready for my lunch tomorrow. I love the Nam 
Roy, if you're going to plant a pomelo, this is my favorite. I don't know why I'm whispering, but these are starting to come. Aren't they beautiful? They make a great centerpiece. Looks like the boss has taken a little rest there. I brought him some more water. Ra ra shishkumba. Your cheerleader is here to cheer you on to digging more holes. <laughs> this is the cheerleader spot right here. The cheerleader spot. She can paint her nails while she watches her king. <laughs> It looks like gypsum. He just got the gypsum out. Okay, there's the gypsum. Can't forget the gypsum clay breaker. Why do we put that gypsum in there? To break the clay. To break the clay. Water that hole, George. <laughs> you quit it. <laughs> this is the hard part. This lemonade tree has been with us for a while and it's been in a lot of locations. And it has it's been moved four times. This is the fourth time. Fourth time it's been moved. Welcome to real life Utopia. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Always digging new holes. Yep. Do you need help with this? No. Nope. Okay. That looks like it's pretty dry. This is how it's done, folks. Pretty close to perfect. Pretty close to perfect. Bravo! Lemonade tree going in the ground. So now we need to face it the right way. Okay. So we stand back. Stand back to find the right position. Stand back and look again. Uh-huh. Close enough. We want to make sure that the, the graft is above ground level. Above grade. This is the graft here. So, I think it is, right? 
Is the graft above grade? Yeah, that's right there. Okay. Ooh, very prickly. There's thorns here. Yeah, be careful. These are thorns. Look at those thorns. So, perfect. Could have gone a little lower, but I think this is the safe spot. So now we backfill, guys. We backfill. With the dirt we pulled out. Okay, you found the sweet spot. with a little bit more of a turn. This, little is little where you, this is where your analytical skills come in, which... Just a little bit more. Not me. I'm not analytical. He's the oh, analytical one. There. He was concerned it was a little bit close to this new guava he planted. But I had no other choice. But he didn't have any other choice because there aren't that many spaces. I wanted a dwarf tree in here. He wanted a dwarf, but we've had this for nine years, so... Um, and I it was a little... Just, just keep trimming it. He just has to keep trimming it, keep an eye on it. Keep trimming the guava. And the white sapote here, he can trim, trim that. that back and maybe this one here and can grow. And then eventually another persimmon here. A lot of trimming going on. A lot of trimming. Okay, he's doing the backfilling now. From a different angle, we got him doing the backfilling. Looking good, George. Ra ra shish goomba doing the happy planting the tree dance here from my chair <laughs> the most important part was that we kept the root flare above, I, above um, grade. The root flare are all these roots here at the top. They have to be above the ground, not under the ground. These, these roots here, see these little roots? These roots here, these roots, they want to be slightly above the ground so they don't choke. Now we water it on slow. So it gets full of water on slow. Even slower than this actually. That's a bit high. So I'm gonna turn it down. Even, even lower. I'm so fortunate to have a farmer for a husband. really low so it seeps in deep because if you put it on high pressure the water will just flow away and you waste all the water you want it to go into the hole not down the hill slowly and we're almost done now I've got to backfill the straw the straw that was there before and put more soil on top and then put a tree ring and we're finished okay and come back again and water it every day for a whole week and then stop the watering altogether mm. it's gonna go in a here papaya Yippee ya ho! I need the second tears too. Can you give me the second tears from the table? Yes, I can. So now I'm cutting off some of the dead wood. This is optional, but it's a good idea. Are there new lemonades coming? Uh huh. Yes, there are. Oh. That's good. Will that affect this, the new fruit? This fruit's in winter. It's a winter citrus. Okay. Winter and spring. No, the trimming won't affect anything. It'll benefit the tree. Just small stuff. 
three. You don't want branches crossing over either. See how this is crossing over there? This. You pick it off. You want it to come out like a vase. There were two lemonade fruit on this. We lost them. But that's for the benefit of the tree. You think long term when you prune, not short term. He's removing all the branches that are crossing over. By the way, guys, he's teaching me because I'm a beginner. The thing with George is he sticks to the tasks and he stays very focused on what he's doing. Where my personality style is, I get distracted and I go down rabbit holes like right now. <laughs> I was sitting right in front of the Wampy and I started admiring all the new Yeah, there's a lot of fruits coming in fall. So, difference in personality styles. He's more analytical, sticks to one thing and stays focused where I go from one thing to the other. If if you haven't noticed, I went from the the wampies to the passion fruits to the pomelos to the sapotes. Yeah, there's so many things here that are so beautiful to the black sapote. I'm all over the place, but that's okay. Yep, sidetracked again. I spotted, spotted some more white sapotes <laughs> that are ripening. Yes, white sapote. George did leave me a few flowers in the front. A few agapanthers are, are still standing. And this was one of the three camellia trees that was left. This is the one we planted together 16 years ago. And it has white flowers. But I suspect in years to come, he'll probably want to remove some of these for fruit trees. I don't know. We'll see. Uh-oh. Another variety of white sapote here. I'm getting excited. Woohoo! Okay. We've got the tree ring in. Uh -huh. Any tips on the tree ring? Uh, just... Not too big, not too small. I had to reduce the size. It was a little too big, see? Okay. And so, um, why do you have a tree ring? To keep the mulch, fertilizer, and water in this area instead of running down, running away. To contain, for containment. Okay. Yep. That's it. We're almost done. Yay! Well, I think I'm going to end the video here. And I want to thank you for watching this video. It was a little bit long, but I got a little bit sidetracked. But I thought you'd enjoy my perspective of George planting a tree here at Real Life Fruitopia. Well, this is Kim. And I am off to do a little cooking. Maybe a bike ride first. Thank you for watching our channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share it with your friends, please. Have a great day. Bye.